Next up, we have Liam Randall. He is the CEO and, uh, of uh, Cosmonic, and he is a WasmCon co-chair. He's also a serial entrepreneur, and these days he's working on WebAssembly. He's gonna talk to us a little bit about the component model. Please welcome Randall, I mean, Liam Randall. All right, uh, is everybody excited? I know that I am. Uh, so my name is Liam Randall. I'm the CEO of Cosmonic, and I love all things WebAssembly. Uh, a father of three, co-chair of this event, uh, WASM Day, and I'm so um, excited to look out across this room and see um, not competitors, but so many collaborators, um, because I hope that the theme of today's entire conference really embraces the better together, the theme that Ralph Squatchy and I launched um, uh, a few um, a years ago when we did the original uh, WebAssembly uh, keynote. Um, so let's get started. Um, and before we do, this talk's gonna be a little different. I had donated some of my time to Luke. Uh, so I'd ask everybody to take your phone out of your pocket. We're gonna make this talk interactive and we're all gonna play with WebAssembly components live. Uh, demo gods be praised, all right? And we're gonna use CNCF WASM Cloud, an open source project that we're announcing today has full support for the WebAssembly component model. I want to start with a quote. Learned from the container wars is that we were fighting each other too early in the process. There was this mindset that the winner would take all. The truth is the winner takes all the burden. And that is a short quote um, from one of the luminaries, one of the fellow veterans of the container wars. You know, I was there, I served with your father, you know, back in the day um, in uh, Kubernetes land. I actually had an early Kubernetes startup that I sold in 2016. Little benotes to me that people would still be getting into Kubernetes today. So I ask us all to take a deep breath and pause and recognize that this story really is the better together story. And with the WebAssembly component mo model, we finally have our Docker moment. We have a common format, the, uh, the component, that enables us to collaborate and work together. Finally, we're not competing on language SDKs. We're all aligned on raising the abstraction for everybody in the ecosystem. In today's demo, uh, we're gonna be using um, CNCF Wasm Cloud, which originally came out of Capital One. Um, it was open source in 2019. We just launched um, a new Rust host, and it's on its way to 1.0 and incubating in the CNCF. It's compatible with Kubernetes, but not dependent upon it. I'm gonna use a couple different tools today for demonstrations, but all of them underneath the hood work with CNCF Wasm Cloud. That's what we're gonna be orchestrating today. So take your phones and everybody hit this QR code. Let's deploy some components. Uh, if you watch the little demo on the left, uh, you'll see a couple quick steps. Uh, just um, auth with your favorite um, uh, auth provider here. Uh, and then click Deploy Now. And what's gonna happen is, is you're going to deploy WebAssembly components for the first time. And hopefully it works, it's a very simple application. Um, what it'll do is just uh, let you um, grab a random XKDC comic, uh, comic and deploy it. Now, um, let me pause for a moment and there'll be much more content about this later, but let's talk about what these WebAssembly components really are. Uh, the WebAssembly standard actually has two specifications, um, uh, modules, uh, which are the executable component and WATS, right, the human readable piece. Components are simply just modules uh, with the interface um, a definition at the end. And what that enables us to do is to have this common um, view of the world uh, that I think we've all really um, uh, centered around. Uh, this idea uh, that while WASM itself, as Bailey Hayes says, is just three integers in a trench coat, WebAssembly components now let us start thinking about Lego blocks. And um, when we start thinking about Lego blocks, we suddenly realize how many of today's um, constraints we're suddenly freed from in this model with WebAssembly components. The one that Wasm Cloud really focuses around is freeing your application architecture from a tight coupling to the application topology. Think about your development life cycle, that simple app. Did anybody successfully deploy that? All right, got a couple people down here that, that, that were able to click through and get their application deployed. Um, that, uh, think about the development life cycle of that simple app, um, a, a pictured here at the top. You might start developing that on your Mac and think of these components as Lego blocks, but you might want those Lego blocks to be separated or scaled across multiple VPCs on the left or even running it across Kubernetes on the right. An orchestration standard that's included in Wasm Cloud um, enables us to do that very easily. So let's do another uh, uh, example. Let's do a really tiny one. 
I've taken three WebAssembly components and deployed them actually around the United States. We're in Seattle, in uh, uh, US, uh, AWS East in Virginia, I'm running a web server. And in uh, Azure, uh, down in Texas, I'm running um, a little, another WebAssembly component here. And on stage, right here on my badge, I'm running a third WebAssembly component, um, uh, this little device right here. So everybody take your phones, demo God be praised. And this may be crazy, uh, but here's my QR code, curl me maybe. And uh, uh, when you curl me, whatever you send uh, in that request will actually pop up here on my badge. So let's see if anybody gets it. Okay, I see some messages coming across. So people are actually connecting. Think about the path of the packets that you just took. You're in Seattle on this conference Wi-Fi. You went all the way out to Virginia, uh, into AWS, uh, onto Wasm Cloud, which uses NATs, uh, down to Azure, uh, from Azure in Texas, back over this Wi-Fi to the badge running on my chest where we responded in uh, just a couple milliseconds. If that doesn't let you know that the WebAssembly component model is ready for prime time, I don't know what is, all right? So a tiny example, and if you don't really trust my QR code, you can also hit me at liam.wasm.wtf, which is my quick way of announcing that Cosmonic also supports custom domains. So you can uh, continue to hit that throughout the conference if you wanna send me a message. I'll put it next to my bedside so you could wish me good night or anything else. But what about the really hard problems? What about bigger infrastructure? What about telco? What about energy systems? Financial services, transportation? Does this model really hold uh, true for these areas as well? And the answer is that regulated organizations actually suffer the most. They're the ones that are absolutely crucified on the crippling common complexity that's inherent in containers. The idea that we embed libraries at compile time instead of runtime the tight coupling to specific CPUs, services, and application topologies, the cold start time measured in seconds versus microseconds. Um, and uh, put together a quick demo here that also runs across uh, an imagined telco environment and three live clouds. I don't really have time to go through it in huge detail, but if you come by our booth, um, uh, you can come see the rest of this, where we're gonna orchestrate um, WebAssembly components and machine learning um, both on the edges uh, in the, um, uh, and in the cloud as well. Uh, so I hope you'll join me in exploring the WebAssembly component model this week as we sort of understand the impacts of capability-driven orchestration, policy-based uh, component execution, um, and how uh, WebAssembly orchestration uh, can help us template and scale infrastructure to new heights. Um, but most of all, as we pursue our common cause here, that all of us, every startup and company in this room just wants to raise the abstraction, that components are the ladder for us to get there, and that we'll work together to make WebAssembly better together. Thank you so much for your time.